about 14 billion years ago, there was nothing. Like, literally nothing. But then, there was something. But it wasn't just a gradual fade into existence. It was violent, fast, and hot. The entire universe was an infinitely dense mass. A golf ball-sized chunk of space at this time would weigh 100 million trillion 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 pounds, and it expanded in a wave of hot, fast craziness. Now, we are here. Uh, a common misconception about the Big Bang was that the universe was uh, in a point of space the size of a pea. And then it exploded. But, 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 but the problem with that is that would mean the universe has boundaries and edges, which it doesn't. Uh, the Big Bang happened everywhere at once, not in a specific point in space. Uh, the particles didn't shoot away from each other. More space was just created in between the particles. This took incredible amounts of energy, so the universe was hot enough to create atoms from particles. Within the first three minutes of the universe, hydrogen and helium were created from the dense explosion of particles. The particles crashed into each other like roller derby and made the first elements. Hydrogen and helium were the only atoms in the universe for about a billion years. So, basically, around 300,000 years from the Big Bang, gravity started to pull in these clumps of hydrogen and helium together. And, and then the bigger the clumps got, the more gravity pulled in more stuff. <laughs> so you have this snowball effect. <laughs> this happened for a really long time. Around a billion years later, as the gravity and pressure grew in the clumps, the insides got really, really hot. <laughs> they started burning and fusing like crazy. These clumps became the first stars in our universe. These heavy stars had very strong gravitational pulls. Other particles began to swirl around these planets, which formed solar systems and galaxies. The universe took an extraordinary journey from nothing, to violent expansion of particles, to sparse, to populated and colorful. But how do we know? There are three major lines of evidence that support the Big Bang Theory, all discovered within the past hundred years or so. They are the abundance of elements, cosmic background radiation, and red shift. Uh, si since the universe was about 10 billion degrees, um, the proton and electron particles fused together to make hydrogen and helium. Uh, in the beginning it was just those two elements. Kind of like me and Becky. Uh, in, in, in the beginning, it, it, it was just hydrogen and helium. But then stars started to form, and, and the stars created new elements, and, and hydrogen started to cheat on helium with those new elements, and, and hydrogen just left him high and dry, so now helium is lonely in a too big apartment with a too big rent and a broken heart. So basically, that, that's called Big Bang Nucleosynthesis. The initial moments of time when all the hydrogen and helium was created. Since the most abundant elements are hydrogen and helium, and there's been no evidence of anything else that could create that much of these elements, we can assume that they came from the Big Bang. This evidence is striking. There are no other logical explanations for the amount of these elements in our universe. But still, this is only hinting at the Big Bang Theory. We need more evidence to truly believe it. In 1964, Penzias and Wilson provided a vital extra piece of evidence. Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. Oh, Star? Oh, okay, um, I'm, I'm Doug. Um, uh, the universe was pretty hot when the Big Bang happened. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure you know that. <laughs> and uh anyway uh 
as, as the universe expanded and, and cooled, the, the 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 heat from the the Big Bang uh, dispersed and 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 and, and, and affected the, the the overall temperature of the universe. Um, can we can we stop there? Just uh, get someone else. I I I, I feel sick. Hi, I'm Benson. I'm five years old, but I'm really, really smart. We can measure the microwaves in the sky, which are all uniform. Uh, like, like, the whole universe is uniform with these waves, which is crazy, because where does this heat come from? The Big Bang. And it was really, really cool when they found it out, because it was on accident. They, they were listening to the waves, which sound like... But then they thought the tsh was a mistake, so they kept trying to get rid of it. But then they realized it was a big bang! <laughs> and that's how you get a Nobel Pizza Prize. From this evidence, we can see the effects of the big bang. But how can we see it real time? Well, red shift is the most effective piece of evidence. Oh god, this is my favorite one. Such a marvel of nature. <laughs> so, uh... The universe is expanding, and uh, we, we know this because uh, blue light has a shorter wavelength than red light. So when light shoots across the universe, we see like redder. And, and, and this is how it means that the wavelengths are being stretched. <laughs> Edwin Hubble developed a constant that said that objects in the universe moved away from us at speeds proportional to their distance away from us. Objects farther away moved faster. This means that the more distance there is, the more room there is for more empty space to be created. This makes them move faster. He put this into a quick. Hey, are you sleeping? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, no, of course not. Good. You asked me to come here anyway. Anyway, he put it into an equation that said that. This equation was basically distance over time per megaparsec, which is 3.26 million light years. This is essentially a positive feedback. As the distance increases, the speed at which distance is created increases. The output positively affects the new input. This continually goes farther and farther away from the norm, which would be right next to each other. Uh, so, uh, if you look closely up at this data, uh, you, you see, there are real things that we have measured. The farther the distance in megaparsecs, the faster the velocity. Uh, there are no outliers. This means that this supports the constant rate of expansion. It is a law. Well, we know the Big Bang happened because we can see firsthand how the universe expanded from being infinitely dense. The Big Bang, the greatest event of all time. A moment of creation, heat, passion, glory. One of the greatest mysteries of space finally uncovered. Discovering the Big Bang was not only important in understanding how our universe functions, but it is a massive step in furthering the human race. In the eternal words of Einstein, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. Hi, I'm Tucker Godbolt, the writer and director of this film. Thank you for listening and learning about the Big Bang. It's a really important topic. But the Big Bang isn't as cut and dry as this film may have made it seem. The Big Bang is one of the most hotly contested subjects in science. Even Einstein himself thought that the universe was static. There are many theories that go against the Big Bang theory. I mean, after all, it's still only a theory. 
The steady state model, for example, states that the universe isn't creating more empty space like the Big Bang model, but instead, it's creating more matter. This means that the universe's density isn't changing. Weird, right? The scariest part of this video is that none of it could be true. I mean, it's likely true, but we can't know for sure. And that kind of goes for all science. It's kind of terrifying and exciting how little we actually know. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Good night.